Welcome back to another Warpath video, guys. It's been about three weeks since I've posted one because I've been a little lazy, but also been really busy and have had a lot going on. And following up from Cairo, our event had become a little toxic. I actually ended up not wanting to cover the remainder of that event. We did lose. We never got safe zoned. Uh, but we did learn that a particular alliance absolutely hated our guts. We honestly believe they cheated. Uh, to win and we actually had collected some proof that we had sent to Lilith screenshots conversations I had requested Lilith brought back the verification feature and they did and immediately after that happened it seemed to stop and there were a lot of other videos that have other people experiencing similar things in other battlefields I'm not going to name names there's definitely some stuff that was happening out there hopefully it doesn't happen this event but that's partly why I didn't cover as much of the conquest over the last couple of weeks uh, alongside just really being busy. So here I am back. We are now in Moscow. And if you don't live under a rock, the official Warpath Discord absolutely just completely blew up because everybody was waiting for matchmaking and everybody got the mail message saying that matchmaking was not successful. It happened basically across the entire game. From what I understand, um, within three hours or so, uh, cause basically when that happened, I'm like, well, I'm going back to work and you know, Hey, it's going to be a bit, they fixed it in like a couple hours. And then of course I was getting pinged on discord by everybody in my life. It's like, Hey, time for diplomacy, uh, get on and take care of this. And by the time I got on pretty much, I had tons of chats from everybody that teams were basically picked and they wanted United power, uh, as part of their coalition of four. And I was pretty good with that matchup. So to share with you guys what that's going to look like for this particular conquest, we are actually going to be allied with BZRK, AGS, and GKZ. Uh, GKZ is server 27. Uh, we've had good luck with server 27 alliances uh, in the past. So we always typically, I'm good with allying with them. They said we've played with them before. I don't quite remember the... The, the particular name, but they may have a lot of players that we played with before. AGS never uh, played with them before. BZRK never played with them before. We did split into two smaller alliances this go around. So we were 25 billion. We actually had TEUK from server 12 uh, migrate and merge with us. That really did not work out. I'm kind of sad that it did not. Uh, nice enough people, but just the team fit was really difficult. So they are currently playing inside the Chinese Alliance in Server 26. But what we did was we basically took United Power and I said, you know what, we're going to go in as a super focused team this conquest. We've lost the last few and too many farmers even still. So we took everybody with a score in Fighting Machine of 17.5 million and higher in 40k repute. And that's and everybody else. I moved them out into our secondary lines that we created called United Power for Silver, which actually ended up being 8.2 billion, 54 players. And they're actually in gold three fighting alongside uh, with 16 alliances. And so we are 16.5 billion, 74 players. This go around about hyper focused with only players that performed the minimum requirements for United Power. And for those of you that own 17.5 million fighting machine points is effectively 25K modern unit kills of the lowest modern unit grade is what we kind of went with. Next event, we might combine the two back together just because it's really hard to maintain two total alliances. The problem is you have friend groups that you move some non-performing players out. And then of course you have performing players that want to follow their friends. So that poses some challenges and then there's not exactly like thousands of players and thousands of great players to pick from to build an alliance of say 150 players very easily so we are right back down to 74 players but because it's difficult to maintain two alliances and just deal with that for a variety of reasons we may just combine them back together and deal with some of the the farmer accounts um but anyway we're gonna see how this event goes as you can see um, there's already a lot going on. Uh, SQA is server 42. I'm expecting them to have uh, high activity. They have 130 players versus a lot of these other alliances have, say, like 70 or so. And so they're going to have to really compensate because they don't have a lot of 250 plus million power players on their team. So they're going to have to really compensate with number of players and just activity 
versus some of these old teams. Because I think they're going to struggle a little bit with their overall unit power, but that'll basically be seen on how they perform. Uh, everybody I've talked to, including the enemy alliances, are very nice so far. I'm hoping for a non-toxic event. I hope. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. So anyway, so this should be, we're pretty excited. Uh, we decided to change our building strategy a little bit this level four. We decided to do uh, airports first. And then, so we actually drove all the way across the map to do some airports. And then we are going to uh, go back to building from our safe zone area later, uh, just because we want to get directly into the action as soon as possible. So some other things that have happened, um, Lilith did add, which I'm not too thrilled about, actually, the museum. It almost looks like they tried to salvage one of the super weapon buildings uh, as far as the artwork and the modeling. But I'm not exactly a fan of this because, because they effectively added a second legendary showroom, except it's more like the exclusive bistro, it's even more expensive. So first off, let's go skin sets. Skin sets are kind of the big thing, right? So you collect them, you get passive buffs, they're permanent. You can see the skin set buffs that I have there. And they basically have added skin variants to different base skins, different colors of like the Halloween skin, which they do look pretty cool. So, I mean, that's neat. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. But then on top of that, they've added the airlift, skins, the deployment skins, as well as the base destruction skins, which, okay, the artwork and everything and the animations are cool. They've also added commands, command truck skins, the so Christmas, dark blue. Okay, cool. But if you actually look at what it takes to get those, 2,000 of these museum tickets for a truck skin and then 4,000 museum tickets for the base skin. It's discounted to 2,000 right now, I'm assuming, because it's in the new status. So take note of that. So it's actually 4,812 is the normal price, or 246 at the 50% discounted price right now. And then if you want to collect the other set, it's 4,500 museum tickets. Okay. Now, if you go look at what it costs, this is basically the same purchase screen as the exclusive bistro. So you would have to buy out the store, $600 USD for 6,000 museum tickets. Okay, that gets you the three Halloween skins guaranteed. And then total, you can get 7,500 tickets, which is not enough to also collect all three of these. And so on top of this, you have exclusive bistro and you have the legendary showroom, both are very expensive. So to do all the skin sets, you really are looking at kind of a truckload of money every month. And so people are kind of starting to complain about the power gap that skin sets kind of provide at the end of the day. And I don't believe they should cap them because then really taking away something people have actually purchased and it's a lot of money. But I don't also feel like it's a good idea to continually introduce more of them into the game uh the reasoning for that for me uh even though i have almost every skin set you can collect is because they're not doing anything to improve the core game so they have roam on the way possibly naval units cool but the game itself in terms of the units the gameplay mechanics there's a lot of things that could be doing in terms of user interface user experience design just overall unit movement, just the way things work. There's just a lot they can improve. I don't have anything off the top of my head because I haven't given it more than five minutes of thought before deciding to record this video. But uh, the game is not really improving on any of its core concepts, mechanics, or values. And so that's the problem I have with it. Everything Lilith is doing continually, increasingly becomes all about extracting money from your wallet and not sure the game is improving overall or going forward actually developing so you know the super we up the super weapon fiasco happened they had to rip that out of the game they've had a lot of patch issues 
They've been doing a lot of hot fixes. They had the matchmaking issue recently, which we made bets on Discord on what the compensation would be, being about, you know, uh, I guessed 1,000 gold, somebody guessed 200, somebody got it right at like 500. They did fix it pretty quickly in like three hours, so that was pretty uh, a big plus. But, you know, overall, though, um, I'm just starting to feel like their entire focus is entirely just financially driven and, at, you know, not really interested in actually improving the core gameplay experience for the player base. Um, but anyway, that's my thoughts on that. So some other stuff that's happened since, uh, a couple things I wanted to talk about was, uh, G27 dispersed. So Paramount Cup ended and the result of that is a lot of the whales. And we actually have one playing with us. Uh, she's nearly 500 million if she's fully buffed in level three. Um, they have all dispersed into different servers and different alliances. So in gold two limited conquest now we are seeing go to city rankings and power players upwards of 500 million in power so we would not even see players upwards of 500 million in gold one uh maybe legendary to cairo or legendary i think this is going to be more common to see in gold three and gold two now with everybody dispersed i think it's a good thing because i think having all the whales in the player base dispersed where there's a much more balanced mixture of high power players being supported by lower power players and they're not all consolidated into one super whale alliance like G27, some of these others. I think that's actually healthier uh, for the game, um, but we are gonna see more of that. So what I think is gonna happen is we're gonna actually get a really good test of the limited conquest now to see if that actually does the job it needs to do. We've actually done one limited conquest before uh, it was gold too. We did limited 9.1 units. That's what I'm currently running now. You can see I have four 9.1 ground units and my error, which would normally be 9.2 is 9.1. Um, everything's 9.1. And so we're gonna see if that actually does the job. Uh, these whales should not be, you know, so much more powerful than every other player in the game at this point. So that'll, that's yet to be seen. They still are more powerful than most players, but uh, because they're capped, it shouldn't be let's say extreme so some other stuff that's happening that we should talk about um let's talk about what's going on with my my army and my units so uh because we're in limited conquest we get two reverse prints through the battle pass because we're on a limited cycle so that happens every conquest for us so that's awesome last conquest i swapped out my martyr rocket truck for martyr infantry um i do like infantry actually i have zero infantry deck I did actually run infantry at 9.2 and tested it for that conquest in Cairo for base sponging, and it worked pretty darn well. And I have to say I liked it. I have a theory of combining my infantry alongside my super heavy tank, and I'm going to see how that works this conquest. So I'm running a 9.1 super heavy. I have a, uh, yeah, I think it's 8.0 infantry. I'm going to use to spurt with tip of spear and vox. So... Let me know in the comments below if you've caught on to my theory on what I'm going to try with those two units together or sponging bases. But uh, that's kind of what I'm running. And of course, I have my, my error. So for me right now, the big thing is I did finally reach the end of the advanced tech tree for error. That was extremely painful, by the way. Air tech is horrible. I, yeah. Just horrible. But you can see I am now backfilling and I am going to probably close out air. I don't know if by 2024, but I'm making good progress. And as soon as I close air out, because they're all big researches now, I am starting to trickle in infantry. I'm going to close out my infantry next. And then I will actually be 100% done with all advanced combat tech. Not, and that's what I wanted. I don't want to. I don't want to ever have to look back at that. And then from there, I'm going to continue moving forward with advanced defense, as well as my modern artillery tree, which I did make it about 50% of the way through. And so that is kind of where my army and my units and everything are at. I still, because I'm committed on this path, I still am committed to being a artillery and air force player. 
Um, so uh, I still enjoy that gameplay style. So I, I'm not going to make any plans to make like a helicopter or main battle tank or anything like that. So uh, right now I do have Super Heavy, two Liberty Howitzers, um, uh, Vanguard anti-tank gun, Barda Infantry. I am working on my next Vanguard unit and then I have this two reverse blueprints. So if I'm going to do a unit swap to not let those go to waste, it will probably be, I'm thinking swapping out my Liberty Bomber just because it has much more limited use than fighter jet. Or I might swap out Martyr Bomber, but I'm thinking I might move forward and make a Vanguard fighter again, just so I have a, another option there. But because I run super heavy in ATG, my options for Vanguard are kind of taken. So I can basically switch between like Liberty Error and Liberty Ground. I think I have enough to run. Uh, I forget the, the composition, but I think I can run a nine. I can run 9.2 Liberty Error, 9.2 Liberty Ground together. Right now I'm running Martyr Error, so I can run two Liberty Howitzers. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do as far as a unit swap, but that's where I'm at with my army. I can already tell that a lot of our players have done unit swaps because we have like at least. I don't know, already two to three times more infantry than we had in the past. We had like two infantry units. We had like Curiosity and then myself uh, had uh, made some infantry. And I think we had one other uh, ex David uh, was another player that had some infantry. And so now I'm noticing that we have quite a few more uh, that have built infantry units, possibly even for this event, which is really cool. The big thing, though, is I did awaken a bunch more Air Force officers, specifically fighters. So last event I awakened Nandirani, it's a pretty solid fighter jet officer. She is a counter officer, so she's a hybrid of offense and defense with special abilities. So she's not full offense, she's not full defense, she's a hybrid. And she basically, I think I uh, recently moved forward Awakening Polar Phantom. I really wanted to pair him with Comet originally, they have a really good offensive setup. But I actually think that Polar Phantom and Ajarani are going to make a good combination. So that's what I'm going to try. So I'm currently running that. And then I have Comet as well as some of the balanced skills from I Rising Ilya. Star Ilya um, or passives. So I think this event, I'm going to be able to experiment with fighter jet officers to see what I can do the best with effectively and really strengthen my air force now that I'm starting to max out the tech. And uh, I have not done Blade Wing. He is really good. I know he's really good. Um, just preference has been in those three officers for some reason. That's just what I had my the target set to. So anyway, uh, hopefully this conquest will be a lot of fun. Um, looking forward to a lot of battles. Again, hopefully an, uh, a non-toxic event. And since Lilith added the ability to record and stream uh, and disable the alliance tag so i don't have to give away our plans on the map i might be able to actually record a little bit more of the event we'll see um like i said i didn't do videos of the last one just because it became kind of toxic so hopefully if this event's not too toxic i'll cover a little bit more of it um but also just kind of been really busy uh but want to do a video and say hey to you guys and talk to you guys and let you guys know what's up and Hopefully get some good battle footage and let's see where the game goes from here. I hope that it improves and uh, continues to be really enjoyable. But uh, also I have my wife, uh, RevX07, um, who we are now expanding into some other games as well, such as like Super Mario, because I love Mario. Um, that doesn't get a crazy amount of views, but uh, very enjoyable to play. Um, but we also, she really likes playing Battlefield 2042 and we finally got that working we've been playing that a bunch so we're going to do some battlefield 2042 videos we have a bunch of that recorded as well and i i've been i'm a veteran battlefield player I'm not the best at it but i played battlefield 4 a lot many years ago and battlefield 2042 i found is just as enjoyable if not more enjoyable in some aspects so going to be doing that i'm um, not going to be giving up on Warpath at all or anything like that. Going to continue playing Warpath, continue being R5. Um, I did build a more proper leadership team for our lines this go around. So it wasn't just volunteer R4 like we've done in the past. And so that seems to be working out uh, better so far. And we still have people interested in migrating to the Alliance, which is good because even if something happens and I decide to give up being R5 at some point, so could put, like put more time into the YouTube channel, for example, I would likely give the Alliance away to someone who wants to run it. Uh, but then there's a leadership team in place, so it's not all on one person. 
and then I can still continue to attract players uh, into server 26 to recruit uh, and join United Power so that alliance can continue on. Now, that's my intent is not to give up R5 right now. My intent is to uh, continue, uh, but continue building a proper R4 team so the alliance can basically function without me if they need to. And then uh, I can definitely see a pathway where I need to do that so I can spend more time actually producing content, which includes more path videos for you guys. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot of blah, 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 but if you made it to the end, drop a comment. I'll say hello and uh, let's have a, a fun Moscow. Hope everyone's Moscow goes really well and we'll see you guys next time.